You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for MTV's Challenge Rivals. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Challenge Rivals news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for MTV's Challenge Rivals! No mic? Yo, no, what up, is. After Here we are, After Buzzers. It's your boy DJ Jesse Janity, and I am in studio with the one and only Ali Garfunkel. Oh. Garfunkel, I'm so sorry. I always get your name because I always want to say Garfield, and then I go towards. And I say I'm all the Garfunkel, Garfunkel. as a Simon and Garfunkel, and but it's just, Garfinkel. It's uh, such a fun it's name. It's new. It is. Uh, but this is the first time I've ever been in studio with you. We're with the Garfinkster. Yes, yeah. the Garfinkster. In and studio. of course, my dearest Kevin Undergaro, welcome back. Thank you for having me, Jesse. Thank you for coming and joining, especially for this episode, because I'm what Kevin uses the word giddy a lot. I'm very giddy yeah, right now. Yeah, very this, giddy. This episode was epic. It was amazing. Um, we, I, 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 As you said during one of the commercial breaks, uh, every, like not so many challenges, but all the drama in no, between. Literally, we were, we were at like, what, 48 minutes into the show. And, and they hadn't even gotten to the jungle <laughs> no, yet. Which no. Was so was exciting. <laughs> There was so much stuff they threw into this. I felt like we were watching, I was watching Weeds. With Weeds, it's a half-hour program, and you get so much in just that 30 minutes. And this, they gave us a full hour of just real world, road rules, just, oh my gosh, it was everything. But they started it out with the drama that's been building up, CT and Mandy. We get that from the beginning. Um... Well, see, actually, it was CT Laurel versus. By Mandy, the way, so we we, see the, I believe we have Steve the Steamer. Steve, Steve, what's up, baby? How much? How are you guys doing? Good. Hey. How are you? What'd you think of the episode? Yes, loved it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Every time I get Steve on the phone, the episode's been eh, eh. Well, he tells it. it right. He tells it, it like right. he's Steve the Truth. Steve, Steve the Truth they, Seamer. They gave us a full Monty tonight, huh? Yeah, they did. It was everything you can ask for from the show. Did you watch the after show too? Yeah, a little disappointed in that, but right. No, we all are. We'll we'll talk about good. that later. A hundred percent. I I have a lot of questions for all you guys just about the after just show, about, yeah. but it was a little bit of a letdown because their emotions are in a different place at that stage where they do that. But yeah, just go. Let's talk about this episode. Right. Yeah. So we start out the romance between CT Laurel and. CT and Laurel are, you know, looking at the sunset. At yeah, the it's, a, it's becoming like a real romance, whereas it seemed like CT and Mandy was just physical. R- right. And I, I don't know too much about Mandy in the sense of her physicalness. I know her and Wes had something in the past, and apparently they have something now going on. And he's. Oh, he, I'm sure Mandy has something. All right. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and which was the running joke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm you know, kidding. as soon as CT is upstairs with Laurel, they you know they're having these deep conversations. Mandy's downstairs at the dinner table, and everyone's kind of ragging on Mandy, saying, "Oh, he's upstairs with uh, you know, Laurel's upstairs with your man. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna step it up?" Mandy gets in her defensive mode, and you know, I couldn't tell if she was laughing or crying half the time. I think she was. I think she was kind of drunk. Drunk. Yeah, I think she no. was just drunk. I, I think, think the she emotions knew what were to pouring do. Even out. at the beginning. Uh, at the beginning, I know at the end when she was I like, think she, well, Johnny. I think the laughter was defense mechanism, like playing it off, like, and then the truth serum, the booze went into her, and that's where it became erratic. So well, you, she made that comment too. She was like, How do you like my sloppy seconds? And she said it oh, as a yeah. joke, but the way but, she said come it, on. Yeah, that's, you could tell right. that 
you know. No, there was there was there's some animosity in there. Oh hell and I, yeah! And I, I love that she's like she's like I don't get me wrong. She's like I'm not jealous. But then what are you then? <laughs> are you you're not a concerned friend? That's for sure. Like you are a certainly. Yeah, friend. you're not. She, no, you know, don't it's funny. Pretend. I, I want to shout out. I, I was out. I went to dinner this weekend uh, with my old boss Mark Cronin, who did all the Rock of Love shows, the Flavor of Love shows. He was my boss when I was at MTV, and him and his wife, you know, who both work on all the shows, were saying how a Stockholm syndrome really sets in with these people that are mm. cooped up in one place. And he's and he said the reactions are generally pretty consistent. Like the most. So even and not that the, these people all appear crazy, and they probably at this point are because the fame has all made them nuttier than they, what they would be. But they were just saying that everyone who gets in these situations, it's just you know day one, day three, it's a formula. week one, week yes, they all start breaking down, going nuts, and 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 even my little Houston girl, uh, <laughs> Jean, uh, you know, Jasmine. she's really wearing it on her sleeve. But when you see like last week, and she, you know, I wasn't here, but you know, throwing the the lavalier down and smashing her mic, and just, you know, even though it's like, oh look how crazy. After meeting with Mark Cronin and talking about everything, it seems very normal. It's just that she um, is less inhibited where she shows it. But when you see Mandy, you know, starting to just get all incoherent when she was drunk and kind of talking to them and right. then way she jumped right on Wes and you know it's easy to judge but to be in this place cooped up for so long with the same amount of people and just being just pumped alcohol and it it's anyway it from hearing it, it felt it, it changed my perception to talk to Mark and to hear that every single one of his shows it this is it's exactly from surreal life to Rock of Love to Flavor of Love to, um, geez, I don't know, whatever, even Famous Food that he does now. Same thing. He's like, same exact steps. He's like, it's it's amazing. When they were talking about Stockholm Syndrome and, you know, what happens to typical human beings when they go through that. So And, it, and it's also, I think it's also that you're constantly being watched. You're always being watched. The camera is pretty much always on. And as much as, you know, you want to pretend that it's, you're just trying to go about your business and win this competition and everything. Like you kind of have to still put on a performance. That's just more pressure for you. Have you have to put on right. a performance, in the back right? And and what they say, what they say is now, and this is what they they say, and this is even beyond Mark. In all my meetings around town, you know, we've been approached for geez the last five years, Maria Menounos and myself about doing reality shows, and you know we've always been resistant to it. But the one thing they always say is by the first to say second week, you you just forget they're there. And we've heard from other reality stars and other stars who did reality say that you just kind of at some point forget they're there because they're there so much. They're so present. I think the greater characters on the shows, the Kennys, the Evans, the more experienced ones and the ones who are more more talented in terms of performing, the Brett Michaels, they are the ones that are cognizant that the cameras are there and therefore they can hang on. They can, right. they can keep their mask on longer. Whereas uh, the girl from Houston, I keep forgetting her name, her mask fa- is going to fall off sooner. Or a Mandy, her mask is going to fall off sooner. But the, the better ones can keep the mask on the whole time. Well, actually, to even touch on that incident from mm-hmm. last week with Jasmine, um, I watched... I just realized that all these after shows were coming on, you know, because we come straight in here after the show. Right. Um, so I went online to try and see what I could find. I found I saw some of the extra footage that they had, um, and they actually showed the fight with Jasmine and Janaea. And I don't know if you remember, but Evan came in and tried to, like, fix he, the situation. He did. He did, yeah. They actually... but. Him trying to fix the situation was almost in a joking manner because he was like picking her up over right. her head and right. everything. Right. But he was really they sh- the clip that they showed it was so serious. He literally had Jasmine and Janae facing each other, and he was like, "Look, me and Nehemiah did it this morning." He was like, "Because we're trying to get on a better communication level," um, and he had them mirroring each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I believe that he's class. a smart kid, and he, uh, you know, Maria knows him. He's he's always talking to Maria, <clears throat> sidebarring with Maria. And he's a businessman. Him and Kenny have a T-shirt business together. Mm-hmm. And again, they kind of get it, so to speak. They get it. They get like what they need to do, what they need to do to win, what they need to do, I think, to make the show compelling. But um, it, yeah, I feel like with him, I believe that there's a side to him that's like, 
okay, guys, joke joke's over. Like at the end of the day, we don't really need to kill each other over this. Uh, and I, I we'll get more into that afterwards, but we did see him kind of throw that mentality out today. But let's get back on track with. Um, I have a theory, though. You know my conspiracy theory about that, which we'll talk about. All right. Um, so after the whole CT and Mandy thing, uh, we, they cut to a scene of Wes, and of course, Wes gives us like <sighs> these lines just every week. He's week just after trying week after so. Week. Now there's a guy who's trying so hard. To be something that he isn't. To yeah. be the you know, to be philosophical and introspective and he's just a <laughs> I'm a Greek guy. Just a redneck meathead. And, but he really said, I can run circles. I no, I will run circles around C T. Evelyn and Paula well, Paula kinda like laughed at it, but Evelyn was like laughing at him. I like, love Evelyn, yeah. Why are you gonna do this again? You thought that last week, and here you are again, approaching the same situation. Which you were afraid to go into the challenge right. with him. But he's just sitting there. Just but you'll run circles, circles around, him. around him. I can't with Steve, him. Steve, I have to. You've got to jump in on this. I know you have an opinion on this. It basically, what you guys just said there. He, he said, uh, I'm not scared of CT, but like two weeks ago on the, on the uh, last uh, challenge, he had a chance to go in and he, he pushed out. So he actually is scared of him. Of course. They all are. If, if you're not scared of him, fucking take him out right then. That's right. But he, he's. He's been a bitch ever since he came on these shows. That's the way he operates. And and you know, and I don't want to get into the after show, but what really just like was was grossed me out was when he said, "If you fought CT, what would you do?" I would curl up in the fetal <laughs> position. And, I mean, it was like, oh my god, like just like why would you roll over? Something has because he's happen. not really I mean, a man. Because he really he's... isn't. You're right. Because he is a he's a pussy. He's a coward. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, when it comes down to it, um, let's uh, speaking of pussy, um, Evan and Nehemiah, <laughs> um, they're talking about that they're not on the same level. Now, Steve, can you kind of refresh me with this? But Evan starts this drama about saying that Nehemiah hides behind a sp- uh. His fake spirituality. His fake spirituality. I, I love how we go to Encyclopedia Steve Akana. Yes, because because he. You, but yeah, Steve, what what is that all about? I think it goes back to I believe it was the Duel Two they were both on, and like me and my like had all sorts of like words of wisdom type crap floating around. Okay, and, like, yep. Evan just they make making fun of him for it, and eventually led to Nehemiah calling him out and Evan beating him in the duel. So it was just a. It only lasted for like a few episodes, but. But it was. Just, I mean, it's not. That what it is. Nothing to be like brought up in the sense of do you, do you agree with him? Do you feel he hides behind that? Or I mean, why are we picking on religion or spirituality in any sense? Why why is that topic being? Why, how can that be? What's causing the <clears throat> communication break between the two of them? I don't I didn't understand that on Evan's behalf. Stuff's edited out. I think just stuff is edited out. Okay, and it's but I liked what Evan said. Like at the end of the day, we want to make money. Right. You know, you're saying you want to make money. I want to make money. But, okay. Well, I will get into that later. Right. I need to write that down. <coughs> um, cut to the scene of them on the bus going to the challenge. CT sitting in the middle of Mandy and Lauren. They just got into an argument this morning. Why is, why is he sitting in the middle of this? How did this happen? Why wouldn't he? <laughs> I mean, don't, I, don't ask question. why. Like, why wouldn't he? Because it's great. Because you know that Mandy was probably sitting down. CT went over and like sat next to her. Yeah, what's up, just, baby? Yeah, just to be yeah. like, oh, are we cool? Are we good? Are we cool? Right, and then, of right, course, right. Laurel doesn't want him. Or it could have, well, yeah, no, that's probably how it went. And, you know, and there it is, that little awkward sandwich that CT is loving and eating up every second of because he knows that people are watching being like, what the heck? Like, look what he's doing. And he's fully aware of it. And he's great at it. Good for him. Or in my twisted fantasy world. <laughs> <laughs> CT and Wes are dating each other. Oh, Jesus. And this whole drama between the girls, they're just doing it for the show. And that they're really, they love CT. They're, he's, they're not, not little... neither one is self aware enough Mm-mm. to get in with that and get in touch with that side of themselves. I don't, oh, really? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, Especially Wes. Well, no, well, Wes is just, I don't know about Wes. Um, so then we get to the challenge jump off, they have to jump off this plank onto their partner. Pull a release and then swim to this buoy. 
Which everyone did. I thought this was, I really wanted to do this. <laughs> yeah, they, they I said, TJ said it. This is fun. You yeah. got to have a lot of fun. And he was right. It seemed a lot, a lot easier than the previous challenges, the rowing one and all that. It seemed seemed less uh, less involved. It was short, too. It was short. Uh, it has to make room for all the drama. But we I, in the in the screening room, we were just cheering for oh my gosh. going nuts for CT. C, so CT and Adam went first. Um CT and Adam went first, and they landed in the water in 16 seconds. And this is the first challenge that, because I usually keep the times as we're going along, this was the first challenge that they didn't show anybody's time for this. Well, no, they showed other people's times, but it was what was significant they, no, they is they didn't show CT. They, they shut it off when the they hit the water. Yeah, as soon as they hit the water, yeah, they, they didn't let it go. Time, but they never mm. showed the finish times. Yeah. Gotcha. Which, that's the first that they've done this because... I, I'm really into that, like seeing who. Because it's hard to tell, and there was I think I f- was it Jasmine where she was like, oh, like they beat us, like when Mandy went. Yeah, I was Jasmine's like, it looked like, like they 40, took the same 50, amount of time. Yeah, so no, n- no sense of it whatsoever. Uh, what did you think of the challenge, Steve? I thought like at first it was gonna be really like badass, but then after everyone just successfully did it, I'm like, okay, it's just whatever. Ex- but yeah. It was better than the, the, the past few, but I thought it could have been a lot cooler. Absolutely. Um, you know, then we had Jasmine and Jenea. They screwed. They were just. They're just not competitive enough for this game. Yeah, yeah really. No, I don't even know why. I can't believe they're still in. I mean, it's amazing. I, I, I think I, uh, well, they're dead I mean, men walking. But I think yeah. next week they they're out. Um, Leroy and Mike. I loved the comment Ali uh, mentioned in the middle of this. Last time that water and jumping was involved, you know, Mike <laughs> yeah. right. Mike got hurt. So in this one, Leroy, which was kind of weird that Leroy was the one to jump onto Mike. Um, um you know, Mike pulls the release and it looked like he pushed a little. He just threw him off of him as far away as he <laughs> right. would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not breaking my would, ribs this time. Yeah. He was like, Get off me, let's swim, and that's it. Which is a smart thing to do. Absolutely. It's really smart. Um, so that was cool. And then we had Kenny and Wes, who I got to give them credit. They killed that. They did. But I, you know what uh, struck me? And, and Steve, did you see Kenny's reaction? Like, he he was acting as if he wasn't going to win. He No, as if he won the yeah. World Series. Yeah, I mean, like, he was just jumping up and down. Do he was himself. on the verge of tears. <laughs> yeah. did, you, did you notice that, Steve? No, I didn't. All the cut. If you check it out again, like, you 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 know the cutaway with him and Wes is cool. They're like Mr. Beautiful and the Kansas City Chief are back. And that was cool. But if you s- actually see his reaction, I can't believe how emotional he well, was. Because this was their first challenge that they won, right? And they yeah. went into the game thinking like we're the power team. But as Steve had said weeks ago, Kenny does not win a lot of challenges, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he does good at the the end, but the actual challenges been pretty piss poor. Yeah, but he, you know, I feel like he was banking on Wes's, uh, on Wes for whatever reason. By the way, out of those two, who's the better athlete, Wes or Kenny? Wes. Yeah. Wes is better, he, huh? He, yeah, I, he's I think, an actual swimmer, so that's why he did good here. Swimming, yeah, ah. but I think I think Kenny would be better in general if he wasn't with Wes. Kenny is a, is an amateur wrestler. He's that's his background. I oh, think really? in a little football, yeah, that's his background. Hmm. But. Um, because as we've seen, you know, he's been slowing the team down. Um, and he then lost in his between, mojo, but now he's got he the mojo him. back. Yeah, well, hopefully, oh, yeah. He's pumped. Well, hopefully not, because I don't want... I'm rooting for CT, so I don't want that team to, to gain strength. <sighs> so in between Kenny and Wes and Paul and Evelyn, Mike and Paula have a random dance break. Yeah, that was nice. It was nice. It I was nice. Them. I th- and I think this is another story. No, this is Misfit Love. It's that just... MTV is building up. Yeah. So go Mike. Go Mike, cause but it, I think, you know, but we heard that Mike was more of a, a player. player than we than we've been led to believe. And Paula is could be part of the act. Yeah, Paula is a little yeah play it too. So a lot of player. I mean, she's been a, she's it feels like she's coming to the end of her game. Well, and so here they are. They, <laughs> yeah, and he's they found each other. Yeah, and he's at the beginning. So yeah, it's, I guess it's perfect. How precious. Mm-hmm. Um, we had Tyler and Johnny. They went up in. By the way, I feel Steve, Tyler and Johnny. I think they're the ones to watch for the end. 
I think so too. Cause, I mean, Johnny brought a lot of hats with him, so I think the hats are the key. To yeah, a lot of hats, a lot of headbands, a lot of bandanas. Yeah. And by the way, the wool cap, some cowboy hat. He's can you can you speak? I was talking to these guys in the commercial break. Can you speak to the Amadeus tattoo that Johnny has? Did you notice that? No, I never. Really he's got a tattoo. big giant Amadeus tattoo on his arm. Does that mean he's like? Does he liken himself to Mozart? I, I mean, think that, what's that what? '80s song? Amadeus. Amadeus. Amadeus yeah, I, <laughs> I, but I, really. Does any, can anyone explain that to me? A theory? Something? I'll try and do some yeah, research this week. Nothing. And see Maybe he likes uh, classical music. Come up with. Maybe he's just really deep. And again, deep. like, wow. Oh, he's if, really deep. Yeah. Deep. <laughs> but anyway, but I do feel like those two guys are, are the dark horse. Like, I think yeah. they are just kind of, I'm watching them creep along throughout this. Remember, Tyler was the one that outlasted CT in that historic challenge where like ct got off the helicopter pretty much came on bitch johnny bananas and carried him and smashed him into the trash barrel remember and then the the next challenge and uh, the ne- they brought in tyler to, to go against him and tyler w- held off ct and they just had to ring the time limit but what 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 happened was and i remember this from the after show tyler was actually very upset that mtv just kind of skipped over it Oh yes, very quickly, yes. and he was mad. He was like, "Wait, why?" He, I remember Matt arguing with the producers. He's like, "Why would you skip over this moment? You saw him care. I'm a gay guy. You saw him take this quote, this super macho male, and bitch him out, and basically throw him into the trash can like he was a rag doll. And me as a gay guy, like I, I beat him. I hung in with that mofo like that. And then you guys just skip over it. Like, and I actually happen to agree with him. I thought it been, would have been a great TV moment." But I think my theory was that they probably held it back to keep CT looking like the right. super champion monster right. that they could always rely upon. But remember the fact that he did that. So now the fact that, you know, with him and Bananas doing as well as they're doing, like, I don't know. To me, they look like the ones that could take this. And they their communication with each other is great. What, uh, Steve, what was their drama? What was their claim to To make rivalry? them rivals, yeah. Was that just? Man- Do you like, think that was just fabricated, or was it based on something? It, it's not really as deep as some of the other ones. It's it's the challenge of CT from uh, Cutthroat there, and they they've had some other like little tiffs back in like the first challenge. Like Johnny called out, uh, no, Tyler called out Johnny and beat him in some some dumb challenge. So it's nothing major, but okay, that's basically what it is. Anyway, I'm watching them, so they were good. Keep an eye on them. Good, except tonight, uh, Johnny. When he said he prematurely evacuated. Yeah, he's like, I've never done, I haven't done that in years. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, I'm up and down with Johnny though, as a as he's a, just his character. To me, he's kind of like how Evelyn is. They're just there, like they don't really. At least on this one, but in the past, he's been a great supervillain. Yes, he's yeah. been a great foil in the other ones. This think... one, he's so overshadowed with so many strong characters. Yeah, he's being he's being taken over by a lot of the other drama, and it's like if you, I feel like in the first week or two weeks of the show if you are not one of the main proponents of starting the drama then you just kind of get left behind and you're just the com you're like the commentator you gotta on get it. in the mix yeah like basically it started off it was like mandy ct and it was you know whoever like kenny stays out of it and like wes is in there and like kenny stays out of it johnny is kind of out of it evelyn doesn't really speak up much like they don't really contribute that much which is you know good for them but the main focus is going to be on the people that are more entertaining Right, and Kenny's Kenny's smart in the sense of he stays in the drama because he just, it's like, you know, you have a big fire, and he's just the one that quietly comes in and just throws a yeah. log in every now and then. Well, him and Evan, it's going. funny that they're together. They're both very witty. They just are. They're very fast, very quick wits, and knowing Kenny as I do, he's just a very funny guy, and what you see is what you get with him. It's also if he's smart, too, but I think he does have TV charisma. No, absolutely. And so when it goes on to him, he knows when to be like, once again, Mr. Beautiful, you know, he he has a way of of making making it compelling. Which is why they ask him back all the time. Um and finally we had Nehemiah and Evan. Wow. What a joke. I, I was I, we were all so mad for Nehemiah. Yeah, we were. I was waiting for this moment cuz since the actually since the first episode 
when they show Nehemiah say, I have the biggest bitch on my team. I'm playing with a bunch of bitches, and I have the biggest one on my team. I've been waiting for this. To and come. they've been previewing him throwing the wetsuit at, or the right. life jacket at, mm. um, at Evan. Uh, Steve, what were your thoughts on this? I, I agree with Nehemiah on that one. Evan, is just, it's just such a bitch move. I mean, if you're going to do it, just tell him straight up you're going to do it. Right. There's nothing Nehemiah could have done at that point anyway. I mean, if, if, you, if Evan wants to stay there, what's Nehemiah going to do? Drag him? Right. So tell him, listen, we're going to throw it, and that's that. And you know, embarrassed. It's embarrassing. So I think you're like yeah. working your ass off, and you swim to the the you know the red ball, and then you look around. Everyone's laughing, and you know it was it was I thought humiliating. I would have felt humiliated. Absolutely. Um, I'm gonna bring the a little bit of the after show in with this. They did show a clip saying that Nehemiah knew about this. Now, that clip, even though Nehemiah said they didn't show the full clip. I don't care what the full clip said because that was for last week's challenge. Exactly. Yeah. It was taken out of context. Exactly. And it was very general. It was not for the specific challenge. No. He totally made a bitch out of him. Yeah. And he embarrassed him. Yes. And at the beginning of this episode, Nehemiah said it didn't work last week. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He didn't say that. Uh, Paul and Evelyn said that. You know, it didn't work last week. You guys need a new plan. Right. Um. So, yeah. Uh, and then just to sit there, like, at least try. Put some sort of effort into it. No, where's the jungle? Just don't be a Don't be douche. a dick about it. Yeah. You know? It, oh. so, uh, uh, ahead, you know, it just gonna... killed me. His prison bitch, Adam, <laughs> is jumping up and down and laughing with Evan about it and high-fiving. I mean, it's like, where is... Can someone help him find his self-respect? Well, and that that's the other thing, you know, Nehemiah is sitting there looking, like, tw literally tweaking, about to blow up, just, like, shaking. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, like, he had the pre-fight shakes, like... And know. then you get off, and everybody, everyone, like, sitting there watching uh, Evan, Adam, and Johnny laughing about it, like, you're punking yourself out on TV, you're allowing these guys to use you, whether you feel Kenny's your best friend, whether you feel anybody, why couldn't Johnny and Tyler go in? Because they weren't stupid enough to do this. And and is it stupid? Here's my conspiracy theory. And it's, again, it's just a theory. But him and Kenny are, have a company together. They're best friends. You know, is it possible that a side deal was made? If you guys win, we split. It's been done before on these shows. Uh, uh, Not these shows, but in reality shows in general. Because I, I can't make that. any other sense of why... You would just go at this early stage. Why you would volunteer yourself? Well, supposedly uh, he, he has a new girlfriend, and he wanted to go home and spend time uh, with her. He was getting really homesick, is what I heard. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because uh, uh, also with that, I don't understand why. Well, I mean, it just adds on to Wes being a pussy, but. If you're talking all this, try to run circles around CT. I do this around CT. Go into the jungle. You go. Yeah. Oh, you stop telling us you're going to so do it and do it. So just a coward. But I'm just saying, like, and you're doing this on national television. But then he's not a very smart guy. Like, he prides himself on coming off that he's a really smart guy, and he's just not. Oh, my gosh. Oh, um, so Nehemiah, uh, Kenny and Wes end up winning that, so they were just overly excited about it. Um, Nehemiah and Evan arguing, and then they were about to have a... It looked like Nehemiah was <laughs> about to have a throwdown with him, and I just thought it was so funny and just another punk move of Evan being on a whole nother platform talking all this trash to Nehemiah. Yeah, he's like 20, like, 30 feet away. I mocked the floor with you. He's like two, 30 feet away from him. Yeah, and, and I love like Wes. Okay, you're both wrong in the respect that you're both right or something yeah. like completely no, no, no. ridiculous. No, like, he said he was clear. He was saying that Evan was right. Yeah. Now, here's my yeah. question, Steve. Was how close are Nehemiah This is Wes? my best friend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> said that but his previous best friend was Danny who was also on uh, San Antonio with them and in the last challenge they were in he threw Danny right in the bus so 
He threw away, no. he threw away his last best friend and his new best friend. Yeah, he, yeah. So where does That's their the where does their where was their friendship built? Because I've never thought of Wes and Nehemiah as yeah, I mean just on, just on their season. They were they were like you know, there's only like three guys that season, so the, the three of them were relatively close. The, I think the friends on this are are Evan, Kenny, and Bananas. I think are the real friends, and I think everyone else yeah. is is what did he say employees employees and I do I think everyone I think those three guys are really friends and I think the rest are just sheep I mean Wes I'll give Wes this you know he may be pussy he may not be able to win these challenges but he has good dick because everyone's sucking it right I Wes? mean <laughs> not, I'm a, sorry, not another but... one not on other shows just but on this one because he's got more power on the other shows no he's right. manipulative well, no because I've, I I went um, on and I was watching. Leroy has a an after show on UStream. And Le- Leroy likes no. Leroy Wes. hates actually really dislikes Wes. Yeah, because we um, know Leroy. He always knows what's up. And it's funny. Which P.S. By the way, what uh, Leroy is now cool with Adam, his original partner from the Las Vegas show. They've made up and everything's cool between the two of them. I believe that. Um, cause I, you know why Adam's not fully committed to that character. <laughs> and then we talked about this when they did the after show for real world, but when everything started coming out, he got attacked for, you just want TV time. You want to be the crazy one. You want to be the Jersey shore instead of what he should have done is respond to that and taking it to another level and be right. like, F you, I'm just, a, I'm just amazing. And you all suck and, and got more crazy he just wilted. Like that was his moment to either make or break, and it broke him. And so now he's playing the, he's playing this role, and that's why I'm sure like he's Leroy's okay with him. And he also, you know, he someone had asked, well, w- would you prefer for the challenges to have Adam or Mike? And he said, I'd rather have Mike, not only because we're best friends, but because. You know, the thing I've realized about Adam, Adam is a scared little boy. Yeah. And he was afraid of doing the challenges. He yep. was afraid of being in the house with mm-hmm. all these alpha males. Right. Um, and he's like, so the fact that, you know, God, Mike... Leroy is so smart, yeah. man. He's just, for his age, and, you know, he's he's so intuitive. He's like, and you could see with Mike, you know, I, I learned from Mike, Mike's not afraid. Mike went up to Dustin as an alpha male and confronted him. Right. And showed him that he wasn't afraid. So, but... Beyond that, you know, uh, Leroy said, you know, Wes is a punk. I don't understand why MTV puts the same four people in. And then every challenge, it's just this these four people. Yeah, well, listen, they're great. They're great television. They're great characters. We've come to know them. So it doesn't, you know, rather than new people, it, it works. What doesn't work, and I've heard from producers there with the rivals, is what they didn't expect was for all these guys to team up, and they didn't like that. And so what MTV needs to work harder on is to make those games and the, the overall challenge of the, the whatever the game is going to be system. to make it so these guys, to really make it work against them. Right. That's what they have to be more creative. I also think, and Steve, you'll speak to this as a Yankees fan, I I was thinking the same thing as I was watching the, the tonight's episode and thinking about, I thought I thought of the Yankees when I, when I thought of that, you know, one of the reasons why most of the, in fact, all the teams and all the players like the fact that the Yankees spend all the money to get the best players. They don't want a salary cap because of the fact they, they like being able to rise to the challenge to beat them. And I'm sure the league likes that too, to have one like super villain, super powerful team that everyone, even though they're going to win a lot and you would think it would get annoying and boring, it's like you want, you're rooting for the Davy to, to slay them every year. Each right. team, each player, but even the fans are rooting. So to have these guys there, you know, like for me, I'm totally rooting. When, when this episode wrapped, I said, wouldn't it be amazing now if we could get Leroy, Mike, CT, and Adam to form their alliance? Because now the other alliance is down to four guys, right? Johnny, yeah. Tyler, Kenny, and Wes. Now that Evan and Nehemiah yep. is gone. Well, and Leroy has spoken. That's you do true. have the girls, but they could be swayed, Steve. Mm-hmm. You can work with them. You can work on them. A lot of them a week. Well, not well. I mean, right now, uh, he lost Mandy's vote, <laughs> right? But you've got Jen. No, because Jen, Jen sleeping with Adam a little bit, even though she has zero respect for right, him. Right, right. And he, but at the beginning <laughs> of this, Adam, Mandy said, "Do we have to put CT and Adam first? And 
uh, Mandy, uh, Jen Well, because said, she was winning, because to win the game, that was smart. Now it's not, it may not be as smart to play that game where you only have those four guys. So I'm I saying mean, if our four guys can get together, CT, Adam, Leroy, Mike, now you get someone to take down the Legion of Doom. And that, to me, makes good television. Oh, I would love that. You that's, see, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, I get like, I get where a young guy like Leroy doesn't get. Why would MTV put the, you know, you put up these super villains because you want to see them beat. We all loved the the year, what's her name, almost solved that one puzzle. Uh, Sarah almost solved that one puzzle to totally sucker punch the 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 team of Kenny and remember the the, the uh, Steve you would remember this was it three seasons ago there was a real pimp team the usual like a team yeah, it's the ruins that was the year of like the uh champions versus challengers and it was like yeah Kenny uh Evan Johnny yeah, Eric, oh yeah. and I believe Susie was there the and whole like Sarah and some chick and right and it was just like they were waltzing through this competition and Sarah and some other chick came within inches of beating them for the whole thing. And you're going nuts watching that, you know? Yeah, so yeah. so there's like, I get why MTV wants to use these guys because it's, it makes you root to see them taken down. I do think the game should be, they should figure out a way to make the game even more difficult for them to all get together. Well, I, I liked what they did last week in the fact of they hid the partner underneath the uh, Yeah, great the technique. Hay, and then said, I wasn't going to tell you which your, uh, one your partner's under. Right. You know, things like that throws them off um but you know Leroy also did make the uh, the comment I hope you know put CT in there because I want CT to come back and then he mentioned that he, they would be able to team up and break the alliance so I do think we might have uh, that coming uh, I hope so I mean the only thing is that as much as everyone's hating, and I'll say this, I've said it before, I'll say it again. <laughs> as much as everyone's hating on CT, he is the only one who's really just playing the game. Mm -hmm. He is the only one that is going in there and pretty much showing. Just like, winning, he's, yeah. He's, he is, he's the only one, like, like he, what's the word? He He's showing his shit, yeah. you know? He talks shit, but he shows it up. And out of everyone, like, Wes hasn't done, Wes has been disqualified all the time. He can't win, you know? CT is pretty much one almost most of the challenges he's right. won he's the only one that's going in there and, and he'll just walk out like they want to come at me you know and i keep winning so just keep winning and, and that's, that's but, it and but wes has nothing to back it up like he can't he's nothing to show for it. yeah okay maybe no. he's muscular he's he's loading the up the God. guns yeah he's, he's like cocking his bicep like it's a freaking shotgun meanwhile it's firing blanks like he's got nothing right right, right. you're shooting blanks kid. you're shooting blanks kid oh so before we get to the voting part, you know, we had they brought us back to Laurel and CT, um, and it, it just kind of exploded right here, where you know CT was just <laughs> went He's into full over douche. His, he just yeah. went into full douche mode, which is whatever. And then he explained why he attacked Adam. It was like that day, like his brother got shot or something like that. Yeah, the was touching that? moment. He was yeah, he was the opening of the up to Mandy, but yeah. then again, like he was opening up to no, Laurel. He opened to Laurel. But and Laura. then and then we but, we talked about how it's like he doesn't like do that more, with. I feel like he was more genuine with Laurel. Yeah, and he like doesn't do that with Mandy. Like with Mandy, no. it's all just like. But then again, Mandy's. We saw that clip of Mandy being like during the reunion where she's like, "There's so many different kinds of sex. Like, really, you're gonna start I mean, talking about that? Yeah, but oh, that's, yeah. Don't and throw that yourself at him like that. Like, but that's that's what's gonna draw the line between him respecting you." And him not, you know. And exactly right. what he said. And, and you look at it, it's like with Laurel. Laurel's the she's Laurel's real. the girl that he marries. You know what I mean? Like in mm -hmm. the in that with that mentality, because she's the good girl. She doesn't isn't going after. I liked him for her when she teamed up with Kenny uh, and and Steve. You would know it was at the ruins when she was Kenny's partner, I think, or maybe. Too. Okay, and what I liked is she really took on the role of girlfriend with Kenny. Where she's like, come on, you can do it. I'll I'll massage you tonight. I'll rub your back. Like I'll stretch it. Like, but she did. Like she just jumped into the role of the good girlfriend and partner, you know, with him. And and there was nothing, no feelings of that kind between them at all. And I know because Kenny's a friend of mine. It, it, but I think that you're right. She is the girl. She even though we see a lot of craziness with her, she's the alpha female. She is. She's the female CT. Well, I don't think she, I think we see a lot of the craziness because the Stockholm Center. But I think there are a lot of redeeming qualities with her. That would make her a good partner to somebody, a good life partner, a good girlfriend, whatever you want to call it. Well, and she even claims, you know, she says, 
to Mandy, like, I'm not trying to sloppy seconds. Like, I'm not trying yeah. to do anything. She was like, so what are you, you know, right. in- initializing here? Um, and CT, Mandy, and like you see, uh, Allie pointed this out. Mandy's like crying to Wes. And we find out, oh, you know, straddling why? him as uh, straddling as you, him. As you straddling said. his knee, yeah. like, yeah. like, really? and then what, CT comes down and is probably like, oh god, this girl, look at her yeah. riding west right here, and says, I would not have sex with her. She's too good for me. I loved it, and you know I'm bad. No, you yeah. know I I'm bad, and all I do is hang out with dirt. You know that. <laughs> And like it was so great awesome. how he just yeah went, just totally undressed Wes. With truth. Uh, Steve, what did you think of that whole little situation when he got into Wes fa- Wes's face like that? And Mandy's. And Mandy's, yeah, literally in between the little cream pie they had going on there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I like the fact he just went right went right in there and like as they were talking shit about him, he just like interjected and shot all over them instead. I mean, that's that's the way you gotta do it with people like that. Right. Mm-hmm. And go right at him. Mm-hmm. So then he went right at him again. The voting system came. <laughs> Adam, I can't deal with this kid. Like oh. stands up. He's like, yeah. So what? So what? I, who? Go ahead. We want to hear you vote. We want to hear you vote. Yeah, so like, hold me back, CT. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, calm it down. <laughs> you, you're not that kid. He's like a little. He's like a little scrappy dude. Is yeah. what he is. Like, you gotta hold him by his like no, his shirt collar. No, but scrappy collar. was like loyal no, scrappy, to Scooby. And like, scrappy and he literally tried. tried. His, yeah, this guy. But, I'm telling you, it's just uh, prison bitch. But I will say, Adam does try in every challenge. This very much this so. Challenge, no, I don't. No. I can't really speak. No, on he past does. He, he hasn't gone to th- 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 throw in the challenges yet. No, he's not that bad. But he's just. So up these other guys' asses, and it's like, oh my I, but God. I think now that it's because he wants to stay. Well, he's even said he like he has a reason because of Jen now that he wants to stay in the house. So, and I think now he's trying harder. There's man, more in I it. As I said, Jesse, a man in love has the strength of thousands. Mm. Yeah, there's there's more in it for him. Like he said, he's like, but, I got 18,000 reasons. Now I got 18,000. But, <laughs> but Steve, I didn't do last week's show, but the and juxtaposition one. between one. Jen's take on on their relationship and his. Well, now, Steve, it was yeah, we so. And about Steve, I know you did. I know you did. I Steve, heard the show. It as was you, so nauseating. Steve, as you uh, reply to this Kevin right now, bad. you know, I know Steve had sent me a um, a blog of Adam wrote a blog about the whole situation. So, in your reply to Kevin, uh, you know, speak about yeah, speak tell us about the blog. He basically just said how like disappointed he was, like in, in Jen, and like how she didn't say anything like that to him. He's just basically a typical like whining douche. <laughs> 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 Literally wrote like this entire, like a long blog, a whole page of it in detail about the situation. It was like, we all know. We all were just talking all this Yeah, we all watched about it you. happen. Thank you. Yeah, you don't need to, yeah. Now, respark. You made a comment about like the, the, uh, the replies to his blog, like all these, all these like fans <laughs> like sucking up to him. Like, you're, you're like the kind of guy I, I like to hate. Are you kidding, Steve? Are you kidding? Like, can you believe? Literally, one of the one of the fans was like, "She's stupid. You were the hottest one on the challenge. You do such a good job." Like, I mean, just like. All right, you're the girl in the room. What? What? Do, do you find that legit or like? Well, fine. Did we, he we'll just have his part. friends write this for him? No, is that how girls feel about him? I think that no. I you think feel that's like how he's girls. Nice and sweet? That's how girls feel about someone that was just on TV. Right. Thank ah. you. Yes. That would if he would have gone up to a bunch a group of random girls at a bar and told them the situation, they'd feel bad for him and maybe buy him a drink, whatever. But as soon as he goes, Oh, by the way, I was on TV. Oh my god, you're so much better than her. <laughs> tr- tr- oh my god, don't trust me. He just She's got not hot. worth it. <laughs> right. Did he just get hotter? Oh my god. No, that's please. Did you just so. grow a six pack? All, that was. Yeah. all right, okay. Um so so CT basically, but CT tells them all in the room, like, okay, fine, it's me. You're all scared. No, and Johnny Banana's like, no, we're not scared. We just, you're a cancer. We're going to move no, you. It's you're like, scared. you're so scared. <laughs> you're terrified. What the? Challenge? I mean, yeah. it was like 10 seconds. He picked it up like a fucking backpack and carried yeah. him. Yeah, exactly. That, and not only that, and you guys are plotting against somebody, like, you're trying to. Well, his ca- theory is like, you're a cancer. We want you out of the, out of the fun house. Okay, but well, I mean, cancer's big, bad, and scary, yeah, and you're afraid of it. That's true. We're all afraid of it. Oh, there you go. Great. So, <laughs> great response. Um, yeah, I don't even. But know. if they go into the challenge, and 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 of course we're all going nuts, rooting 
for CT and Adam and need him. I mean, what's his name? Evan is just like this sweaty, big fat fish hanging from a wire and like flopping around. It's like, obviously couldn't do, I don't blame Nehemiah. I blame Evan. Well, Evan oh, was course. literally not moving. He was literally just sitting there now. And here's the thing. CT is a, Oh my, I'm just going to keep saying it. A beast. He, he literally moved that entire pole by himself. Adam was not doing anything. No, but I think Adam got in the. But it seemed like the last third of it, Adam got the hang of it because oh, they see, started moving I would say together. That Adam did it at the beginning. At the beginning, and mm-hmm. then he died because you could see the 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 bar was diagonal. Right. But then as it went on, though, they were like in rhythm. It was like clink clink. They were going like one to two or three feet at a t- time together, and Adam would have to be moving with him. I think Adam just got it. He got the hang but of I it. think also they were able to to get to the rhythm because uh, you, they had to see that like Evan and Nehemiah weren't moving, right. so it kind of gave them time. I guess you know in to between figure it for out. TD to be like, okay, like on three, like just do like trying to because when you're both like neck and neck, there's no time. By for the that. way, I even like CT the coach. Yeah, no, because in all he the challenges, he's always <laughs> like saying, "Come on, we can do it." And um, man, man, it's like, it's gonna be tough for me at this reunion because I'm friends with Kenny and I haven't seen him, uh, and I ne- I. I be honest, I never liked CT. I never liked CT because he reminded me, Steve, of the worst people from Boston. <laughs> and, and I, you know, like I always said, why I didn't like Adam. But he has totally won me over in this show. Did you not like CT in on, when he was on The Real World? Didn't hated him. Really? See, I liked CT on The Real Come World. Come on, he, I, argue, he reminded me so much of yeah. someone that you and I know mutually who I don't want to mention, but it was like there was no logic to what he said. He punched Adam, which was a bitch move. It's like, come on, was, Adam's tiny. You're going to hit him in well, the face. Yeah. The second time he hit Adam, Adam was going at him. But it was the second time. But the yeah. first time on Real World Paris, he like punched Adam and like he never did any, he didn't do his job there. He didn't clean up the house. He didn't do, and like instead of just be, when he was confronted, instead of being like, yeah, okay, I didn't do whatever, he would yell back louder. And I, I see that with a lot of, uh, people from the the east that I don't like is like okay because I talk louder than you and more than you I'm right <laughs> and you know and so I just it was just like he reminded me so many of the guys at home and all the big bad stories from the neighborhood what are you they trying grew to say with, with, uh, <laughs> I'm so believe me I'm one of them so I can say it you know but I've come over to the other side I've been you know well I've he's been come over it. to the other absolutely side. has he even and he I even really said admire it. him now no I want to shake his hand mm. I really like the kid. But up till now, no, I didn't. And I, I think on top of him coming into this challenge like that, MTV gave him the perfect partner for it. It's like you're gonna redeem yourself, fully redeem yourself. Right. You know, he's and to I me, think, I feel like he's turning Adam into a man. He is winning these challenges, and, and giving I, him the confidence. And he always, and, he, go ahead, Steve. I don't want to interrupt you. No, I said really. I, I question. I questioned Adam becoming a man. Well, I yes, mean, yes, <laughs> an excellent question. CT trying to make him into no, one. Trying, yeah. But you're right. Good, excellent question. Mm. I, I, I'm right behind you with that. Um, but, but with with CT, um, I think that he did grow up to the fact that you know somebody got in his ear. Someone responsible said, "Listen, dude, if you, they kept you off a bunch of shows. I had heard that after he punched Adam the second time." That MTV was like, this guy's a loose cannon. We can't, That's even a huge though he's liability. He, exactly he, entertaining as it is, we can't have it. He's violent, and I'm sorry, I, I, put him back in his cage. And that's kind of what you do with people like that. And you you either leave them in jail or you hope long enough so they go. You know what? Maybe trying to punch everyone out isn't the solution in life. Maybe you have to find another way, but you only learn that when you get jailed. And sometimes mm-hmm. they never learn it, but they put him away. Then they brought him back for that little challenge. Okay, let's test him out, see how that goes. And I'm sure there were many discussions because the way Wes went at him, and they, they, they show it in the after show, Wes pushed every button. Mm-hmm. He'd thrown that mattress out. To do that to a guy, I mean, the old CT would have not, would have not only thrown... Wes's match is out. He would have thrown Wes over that, right. and he didn't because he was like, "No, this is how I make my money. Being on these shows, I'm here to make money for my family, and you're not going to make me punch you, and you're not going to make me quit the show. I will get in your face. I will. I will do everything to you to make you punch me, and then I'm going to handle you. But I'm not going to make that first move. And I think that's where he's grown. But I, but as I said, I think the reasons he did grow is 
he was caged long enough. Probably has enough people in his life saying, dude, this is your bread and butter. And then it's, when you watch yourself acting like that in front of everyone, oh, I'm sure that doesn't bother him. No, no, I feel like it, I feel, I feel like he has. Ref, I feel like CT has reflected on it on watching himself because it's funny you're making this comment about the lion because as we were talking about CT coming out and winning all these challenges, I was actually thinking of him as a lion in the yep. sense of we don't see. When they're showing the drama and stuff like that, he's even when he's involved in the drama, he's very zen. He's very just yep. walking around. He's in his lair. And, you know, when he needs to come out, he comes out and he's a freaking pit bull. And then right. he goes right back and he's back and keeping to himself and right. quiet. You know, he pu- he puts his two cents where it needs to be put. But for the most part, he's at one with himself, and he knows to keep to himself. No, and he's carrying the good traits of the Northeast guy, which is to be loyal and mm-hmm. to also fight for the underdog. And I think he's, he's you know, I do think he would he's, would stick up for Adam. He would be... Well, now, yeah. And he is, yeah. And so, and no, and even in Paris, he did apologize in his sidebar, and he put his head down, you know, it's, it's not who I am. I shouldn't have punched him in the face. Right. This is, you know, way back when. So he has it in him. It's just nice that it's all coming out. And they fired him up tonight. He whipped their arses. Yeah, once and again. Kenny, uh, and Evan and Nehemiah. You're my friend now? Him. Are we friends now? Yeah. I love that. He says that. it every, after every yeah, challenge. Yeah, now. And still, Adam, no. Just, just no. No, no. No. I belong to prison wing A. <laughs> That's, um, we'll be friends when we win this challenge. How about that? Well, the whole thing. Right. I still don't, I don't think, think he will, he will. be. No, I He's think Kevin such a Kenny bitch. West. Kenny, but guys, yeah, we'll still like. We're we'll, gonna go out to TGIF after. Right? right, we're gonna go to all our paid appearances together, right? Like, we'll, yeah, you guys will like me and say nice things on your Facebook about me, right? Oh, cool. Whew. Hit me up, Twitter. Oh, <laughs> so Kenny shed a tear because Evan left. He really was. He was all, yeah, he was all emotional once again. The Stockholm syndrome being the booze are leaving. Up. Yep. Um, Nehemiah was okay, Steve. Now, here was our thought. What we wanted to happen was Nehemiah throw the jungle challenge. Oh, wouldn't it have been great? And just literally not have moved and said, where's the jungle? Where's the jungle? How great would that have been? That would have been pretty good, but he has, he has too much high class. That's right. right. Too, yeah. much, too much of a competitor. But you know what I was hoping for, Steve, and I couldn't run it by these guys because they're too young. But do you remember the original Bad News Bears? Yep, too young. Yep. <laughs> Okay, do you remember when Walter the Yankees? Yes, and you remember when the oh, Yankees so pitcher <laughs> got screamed at by his dad? Okay, it was a Vic Morrow screams at the kid, yeah. and it was the kid from Courtship or Eddie's father. <laughs> Gets screamed at, right? And remember what he did in the next play? He caught the ground ball, and then he wouldn't throw it to first base. He just hung onto it the whole time. Do you remember that scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, that was that was this was the moment that I wanted him to just hang on the bar now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, please, please hang on that bar. Do not move. Yeah. That would have been, I mean, because cause looking back now, what would have been, yeah, he's competitive. He's got too much class. But looking back, what would have been the better and more memorable yep. moment? They lost anyway. He would have looked like more of a stud yep. by just hanging there and go, yeah, now what? How do you like oh, it, fatso? Like it. <laughs> you know? But that's also the thing, like as great as that would have been, Beating CT probably would have just been like, just would have killed it. Like at least you know coming coming close to doing it like that probably would have been so much but more. You have rewarding, to share the, but, but you got to share the victory with Evan. It was Evan's grand plan, and you're not really in their clique. I'm telling you, if you th- if he thought it through again, he just was. I think Steve's right. He's a competitive guy. He's a stand up guy, and once he's in that thing, he doesn't know how to be anything but what he is. Right. Which is someone's gonna come in and try hard and not not throw. A challenge. But either way, he would have been the bitch. If they had beaten CT, you still beat it for exactly. other people. No, right. I would have hung on that. And I'm sure if he could have had it over again, just hang on yeah. that bar. But even so, you yeah. wouldn't want Evan to come back and be like, we could have won. It was you. Like, you didn't try. No, like, it no was ma- you. Like, and it would have been like, and it was you. But I th- I don't know. I think the fact that Nehemiah was trying. You drew first and, like, blood, not Nehemi- me. Nehemiah was trying <laughs> And and Evan was like, I mean, Nehemiah was like kind of trying. Like he was trying, no, but Evan, Evan like was like clown. straining but and doing day, it. Evan, you could see in the after show, he barely cared. It was a big love fest. But Poor Nehemiah, you so know, but like Evan, Evan was like, end. Evan was trying and trying and trying and just like not moving, no. not even an inch. Like at just, least Nehemiah, like they said, was a like, beach will. But, but, that was exactly. the but I, again, I'm always up with manager mode. 
it would have been a better TV moment. It would oh. have, if you're MTV, you would have wanted Nehemiah back more if he hung on and didn't and didn't do anything. Absolutely, they'll still want him back. But to me, Evans the star. Yeah. Now at this point, he he's the he's the one everyone's talking about. So we totally skipped over um, a, a, a bi- the big drama between uh, Jen, Mandy, and Laurel. Um, so, but we are gonna we'll touch on that with the after show with what we saw in the after show. So let's head over to a commercial break, and when we get back, we'll quickly we'll, go over the after yeah, show with the men, and then we'll get into predictions. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Genesis is a drama queen. This yes. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. Like you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Nucky is a villain. 424 I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig will come out. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. All right, so we are back now. We find we watched the after show, and I was really excited for it because The Miz was hosting it. Um <laughs> They usually if you have could other call it ca- that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the Miz because that was one of my favorite real worlds. Actually, when they came back to New York with the uh, Mike Coral, I loved I loved the, their dynamic that they had. Um, and I wish they would bring Coral back because Coral is amazing with drama. Um, but all right, the she, did Coral do challenges? Yes, she did. She a, did a lot of them. Right? I miss yeah. the old cast challenges, man. That was. That was some good stuff. Like the original ones. Like the original, yes. yeah. Real World Road Rules. What I said like two weeks ago, I was like, bring back Puck. Where's oh, he at? So Where's oh he my at? God, you know, I mean, I'm sure he is like just a original, burnout. Like the original, yeah. the original But he's bad. such a burnout. I know, but unless you're going to have like uh, 15 weeks of puzzles, <laughs> there's no way that kid, I just predict he's going to do anything. And by the way, want me to tell a dick Puck story? Yes, please do. <laughs> so back when I'm at MTV, one of the girls... That was, uh, that would, you know, we had a group of guys and girls. Their job was to go to the clubs every night to recruit kids to be on the show and uh, people to sit in what we call the picker chair. Mm -hmm. And so they would, they would approach attractive young people with great personalities, blah, blah, blah. But we also like, we always thought out of the box. We had Wild Orchard do a show that was actually Fergie, you know. Oh, the group. Yeah, Yeah. You know, we, we. Wow, you just took it way back. Way back. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm long in the tooth. But um, she approached Puck. She saw Puck at a bar and said, oh, my God, huge fan, blah, blah, blah. I work for Singled Out. By the way, nothing hotter <laughs> in cable at that time than Singled Out or Jenny McCarthy. Oh, best show. You know, and they had the Jenny meter in Entertainment Magazine just to track how big she was, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, because she was so big. And, you know, would you ever want to come on and be a picker or, like, do a guest spot, maybe do something with Chris that would be funny? But he said, wait, 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 what did you just say to me? And she says, oh, I said I'm from MTV and I want to... He's like, stand here and don't move. <laughs> he goes back and grabs some low-level executive who he happens to be out drinking with from MTV, which, by the way, any young executive that would be out drinking with him proves that right. they wouldn't really have what it <laughs> takes to be in the business, and this person actually isn't anymore. But MTV has a habit of, at back then of promoting young people who didn't really probably deserve it, didn't really have what it would take, and that's why a lot of them don't ever leave the network, or when they do, they fail, or eventually they get pushed out of there. But this happened to be one of them. And he brings this person back over and says, you repeat every single word, what you just said. Now, by this point, the girl's white and, like, scared. You know, she repeats everything. And this executive tears her such an asshole. Like, you wouldn't even believe 
How dare you speak to him? Like, how dare you say he is a star? Blah blah blah. And he's standing there with his arms folded, and and you have jeopardized our relations with him. I want you to know what you've done. This doesn't end here. Wait till, wait till Monday. Blah blah blah. Monday comes around. My executive producer gets a call from this person, this low-level executive. She's brought more people into the fray, and th- my executive producer gets berated and then he's told now he has to fire her or berate her and shout out to Dean Young, my executive producer at the time, who was like, "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, let me, you know, that's not her job. And he's like, let me stop you right there. That actually is her job. And you know what? She was going above and beyond what her job expects. And I commend her for going and approaching him or anyone else that's going to improve our show. And I will not fire her. And if you guys want to take this any further, well, we very well can. And then, you know, Dean being a New Yorker was like, you know, basically he was just like, if that little fucking douchebag has anything else, that little prick has anything else to say about it, you give him my personal name and number and we can discuss it, which I just loved, you know, which is why right. Dean went on to do King of the Hill and all these giant shows and just outgrew that place. But that's puck, you know. Such, as I used to say, such a great candidate for Bob Backlund's chicken wing. So <laughs> needed to be put in the chicken wing. But anyway, I, I if I saw him, I'd love just to see him once or twice just to get rolled over by some of these kids. Well, now he's not allowed on any, MT, any of the shows anymore. Really? What's, um, yeah, what's his status now? Steve, what was the incident? I just, see him, with Steve. A, I just <laughs> see him with a crack pipe in an alley somewhere. Um, yeah, that, Steve, where, what's up with him? Probably not far off. I don't know. Didn't he get arrested a few weeks ago? Puck? Really? Well, I was talking yeah. about Puck? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought he did. His name, his name was in the news or something. Wow. I wouldn't even been able to pick that up. With hey, but he's banned glass. from the network? Uh, from the anything, sure that, anything but... real world related, he's not allowed on anymore. Because it was an incident where he spit. And uh... he spit, and then they brought him back for a reunion or something. Right. And... He spit again. <laughs> he, no, it, it was. It was something he he was at. You could tell it was all an act that he was doing. Right. And they totally took him out, and he's never been able to come back on. And it was a. Ch- I believe it was a challenge. I believe it was a real world road rules challenge mm-hmm. that he was on, and he was kicked off, and he's never been able to come back onto any Good. other challenges. Again. You know what it was? They probably told him, like, you can come back on this condition, and then he just didn't do it. He just kept doing what he wanted to do, and they're like, all right, like, fine, you're out. Well, this was his, it was his second chance that they were giving him. Right, and, but I'm but I'm sure, like, for the second chance, they oh, were like, right. okay, like, this time, like, this is what you gotta do, like, whatever, and then he still probably didn't do it because he's puck. He got, oh, it, it was on a off. bus. Everyone was on a bus. Oh, my gosh. If you know this out there and you're watching, 424-256-1729, they pulled him off of the bus because he was fighting, and they brought... Uh, that's uh, enough talking about puke, and I'm sorry. But I, so, like, okay, the after show. I, I'm so, uh, yeah. Here we go. This whole romance, like, w- during the show, we saw that, you know, Mandy was talking shit about Laurel, and she was doing this, like, fake drunk cry, and <laughs> why is it? <laughs> White girls. <laughs> Why it's the white girl it's thing? It's the white girl thing when they get drunk and it's just like Because they're so in- I'm so sick yeah, of be- everyone. Because listen, because, <laughs> because everyone. Jesse, you know why. You know why. I don't know. They're, okay, I'm so, let so me expi- many of them. I'm older. Let me explain oh, because they're much more white people in general, much more inhibited. And they hold all that shit in and then when they drink, it just comes out like a hot mess. Whereas like <laughs> with with more of the black people, they're more honest and they're more upfront. With their emotions. They just just are, okay? so And it's funny because... Uh, that's a stereotype. Whatever. We were, we were doing Whale Wars and uh, Glee Project, and Phil had spoken about how the youth today, whenever you ask them about, hey, how was you know school today? How was this today? It's always a one-word answer. In- interesting. It was awesome. Like, they can never get past that one word. Right. Right, here no, that's, that's what you tell your parents. That's understood. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more of the um, when you re- when you're even with your friends, and you want and and you always look to the smart person, and they're really not that smart. It's the fake smart. Like, well, you know what? That was that was an interesting choice. Yeah, oh, right, well, congratulations right. Yeah, 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 on yeah. your perspective within the world. That's yeah. so deep and insightful. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that's just the the where I was going. You know, going with Mandy. Like, look at the things you're saying. Look at the things you're doing. Like. 
and you never redeem yourself because even tonight on the after show, which we're no. assuming was taped okay. after yeah, the fact. It was just, but listen, it just seems to me like she's the BIM. Lauren isn't. You know, it's it's fine. I, for me, I want all you guys' thoughts on this, the overall perspective of this after show. What bothered me is I didn't like the bitch love fest. Well, okay. Like everybody was hugging and just smiling and laughing, and that bothered me. I didn't want to see that. To me, CT, when he walked on, I was like, is he going to, you know, shake Wes's hand? And then I was like, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't CT do it? Because to CT, it's more intimidating of, hey, I'm cool with everything because I just whooped your ass right. and screwed your whole plan up. And for someone like Wes, you know that Wes would have taken that to the next show. Like, he didn't even shake my hand. Like, you didn't I went out like, of my way to <laughs> shake his hand. <laughs> He's and afraid. He didn't. He's got to be afraid. Once I don't see again, it. Yeah. I take the high road and he takes the low road. Exactly. Because that's CT who he is. CT can't give anyone anything, like any excuse or any reason to hold any. Like, he is just putting it all out there and he's. He's showing up I to is, it. I and guess, just being the Zen master where he kind of, it's like Marie used to, you know, Steve, Marie used to talk about like vintage Shaq, vintage Shaq, not what he ended up being. But in his prime, he was so big and intimidating, but he never really fought with other players. He never, mm -hmm. because he didn't have to, he was just a man amongst boys. Mm -hmm. So he never, he just kind of knew he was amazing. So that's why he was always pretty playful. But maybe that's what was up with CT. I don't know. I just didn't like how... It, like I said, there was just too much love going around the room, with the, especially with the exception of Nehemiah and Evan. It kind of just disappointed me. I, I, with Laurel and Mandy make make up and kiss, yeah, like that was, was like, just like what? Ugh, please, they right, didn't so even talk I, wait, about wait, it. Wait, so you guys, come on, I'm the old guy. No, you guys well, educate me. What, what what was this all about? The love. I mean, as far as the love fest, I, I've always heard that you know the, these guys are very clicky with each other they off are camera. Very and, clicky. They 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 even for years have had quote real world parties. Where and, they have parties where they all get together. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's like, so what's really going on? And then it goes back to, was it last week, Ellie? We were watching it. And, you know, right when, at the beginning of the episode, we saw CT in Wes's face. And then later in the episode, when Jasmine and Janae are f arguing, they're sitting next to each other and, yeah. you know, laughing. And But that also goes back to what I said. Like, obviously, I mean... MTV is notorious for just, you know, they take clips of things. They don't always show the whole thing. So I'm sure there's so much more going on than what they're showing. People aren't as bad as they seem. People aren't as, right. as you know, people aren't as MTV portrays them. So, yeah, maybe Wes and CT get into these these fights. But, like, who doesn't fight? Who doesn't, who, what guys I don't, don't know. get in I each just, other? I don't know. I'm thinking of, I just like the idea that the mob wives fully committed, still crazy and hating each other in the after show. I'm sure I don't watch the Oxygen, the Bad Girls Club oh, anymore. Just Right? Like and they, but they carry it on, don't they? The, there's no, I don't believe that that is they can't even in any sense. Okay, so, so I'm saying, but their after shows, there's no love fest. No, no, no. They don't want to stab each other, and that's what I like. And I was disappointed in this, where it was like everyone kind of wilted. Well, and so what disappoints me the most about this is I expect that the reunion is going to be crazy. I hope but I mean, so. if it's like these after shows. Yeah, you don't want to see no, that. No, you know that there's going to be like the three or four main people that are going to cause the stir and everyone else is going to back well, up and Houston let them. Houston is going to be in the house. So <laughs> I'm waiting for something. Well, they'll all, they all. Well, these guys are old enough. Maybe they've Steve, all did you notice the Love Fest? What was your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, Steve. I basically same uh, thoughts as Kevin on that one. It was just, yeah, there's not enough uh, fighting and just like, all forgiving each other. I fuck that. Yeah, and hanging out and just being cool. It's like, but come just on. the fact that they've been doing it for so long that it's like, are they are they in the same mindset as Evan? Because you know, Evan said to Nehemiah, he was like, "Is it really that serious?" But when it comes down to it, like, yes, we're you're just winning money. Yes. Winning money? You're, you're winning money because these guys don't get paid no. to, to do this show. So this is like literally would set them up for three, four years, the money they're going to make. And not only that, you're humiliated on international television. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Like, the only one who was who was actually pretty real was when Nehemiah came on. Nehemiah he, was He skipped real. over Evan, and then he just like, right, no. you know, he said hello to Laurel Mandy, and then he, he shook CT, whatever, but he, and then he just sat there. He didn't even, he just waited for it, and then they started the questions, and he said what he had to say, and, and Evan was like trying to go back. He's like, listen, like, 
this is what happened. This is what you did. Like, it's on you, you know? But he's not going to get up and throw a chair because I think he's he's better than that. He's better than that, but at least he, yeah. he was just if honest. Were, you if, could tell he didn't like him. If he were really that bad of a guy, he would have swung at Evan right when he right when he forfeited the challenge, essentially. He would have went at him. But right. he's, that, Nehemiah's not, he doesn't seem like that kind of guy. No, and, and, you know. He's proud. It, it's, you know, the first question the Miz asked was, why would you volunteer yourself? And... If you can't just sit there and feed into your bitchiness and, you know, he sat there and said, oh, you're Nehemiah, you're going to sit there and be salty about it. You didn't yeah. even apologize. Right. No. And then to sit there and let them play the clip, you let them play the clip and Nehemiah sits there and says, they didn't show the whole clip. And oh, nobody yeah. once said that it was from the week prior to that, you know. No. As soon as they showed that clip, Wes jumped on it, oh, and they Evan all jumped did. on it. They, I was like, oh, yeah, was see? The, yeah, was see? <laughs> yeah, look what you just saw. Yeah, to take yeah. the blame off themselves for being like, right. hey, you should, guys should go against CT. And, and I love how Evan was like, look, I went in, I tried to plan, and it didn't work. Like, how about your plan could have been you go into the challenge like a man, play the game like a man, and you win it like a man. Right. CT How about that status. plan? Where did that plan go? Well, it might it might have went with the same plan as ne uh, as Nehemiah's not on stage. Evan <laughs> says uh, the Miss says in a fight, who would win? Uh -huh. Are you kidding me, Evan? You couldn't lift yourself. You um, <laughs> couldn't were, even lift his own body weight. You and Adam alone. were giving blowjobs to the whole cast. Like you, you you sitting here and like deadpanning the the camera, saying no, I would I would mop the floor with Nehemiah. Like a boss. I mean, so Nehemiah comes out and got in his face and was like, really? Really? You're gonna? And not even that, but so Wes. not like a man, but like a boss. Like a boss. Like, boss. like yeah. a boss. Like the boss Evan is, apparently. Oh, um, and even Wes is sitting next to him like, dude, you wouldn't, you wouldn't beat him in a fight. The only, yeah. the only way he'd be able to mop the floor with Nehemiah is if Nehemiah was unconscious and he turned him upside down like a mop and used his dreads to clean I don't think he could floor. even pick him up. Probably not. He couldn't <laughs> pick himself up. But yeah. that's, I mean. But at least Wes, you know, I'll, I'll give Wes, Wes honest and said, no, CT would whoop my ass. Hey, no, no, but I don't like that because then he, he acts like a tough guy when he's not around him. Well, but he's here's, around my him. here's my thing about that. I feel like something is going to happen during the season between Wes and CT. We're, we're, like romantic? we're really going to draw the line to say you are the bitch and I'm the master? Because, for, because see, Wes has never admitted anything like that. Like to right. sit there and say, oh no, CT came back like 10 times bigger, 10 times stronger. I hope you're right. I just happen to think it's your typical pussy coward who now has to be in front of the guy and he's scared. But I hope you're, I, but I hope, but, I, but you know what? I hope I hope I'm wrong. Do you know what though? I mean, and if anything, I feel like Wes is the kind of guy that if something were to happen during a challenge where maybe CT and Adam lose, like for some reason they get disqualified, whatever they lose, but not even because of something CT did, and like in West wins, not because of something West does, but you know Wes would take that as a win over CT. Oh, he would he would be like, see, I told you, like he would take something That's like why that. I'm here. Exactly. And he's gone. Exactly. And he would never let that go. Because like, I'm the better one. Meanwhile, like he doesn't even like have to a do anything. <laughs> he like would a just he's Should waiting we... for the moment that he just happens to win over so, CT. I think Phil's giving us a signal for predictions. Well uh, but, wait, all right. within predictions, like what was now, you're after Buzz. Do you think the whole thing with Mandy and CT was a build-up in the fact that Mandy and Wes were originally hooking up together? Because that was so quick of them. I feel. I mean, like I know Mandy's loosey goosey and whatnot, but she Mandy, did, well, she was on the rebound. She needed to to make, to get him back and jump in the arms of someone else. Mandy to Wes, I feel, is Jen to Adam. Hmm. She's just going to West because... But they have, like, a... There's, like, a, a bond between them. Well, Manny was... Wasn't Manny told. talking shit about West like, two weeks ago? Yeah, I just... Well, think, it's a CT. I think West, West, Yeah, West so West I don't think she's that loyal. Solid and with her, know. you know, trying and, 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 and very available. And I think he was a great go-to guy because she was so bummed. Uh, but what are the predictions? All right, so next week we see something's going to go down between Jen and Kara Marie. I don't know where this could come from. Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> it is. No, I'm telling you. I can tell you what it is. It's just too much time in the house. It's just, just got all, 
listen, with these guys, all it takes is to be drinking and someone to be like, your mother. What'd you say about my mother? I just think that's what I liken it to. Yeah. I don't like it, it to anything more than that. Yeah. And it's also it's also like they I mean, they don't go out that much. You know, they're all just together in this house and and it's like when you're when you're drinking with all these people, and it's like you'll find anything to you'll find any reason to fight anyone. And also I think that some of the characters that aren't being paid attention to, like the main focus of the drama is like it's like it's always West and C T and then it's always like and I think some of the girls are they start to just fight for it, like, well, you know, no one's really paying attention to me. Like, what can I do right. to really get back in there? St- uh, Steve, what do you think's happening next week as far as who's getting kicked off? We have a female elimination next week. I'm going to go with Janae and Jasmine again. Gone, baby! You said Janae and they're Jasmine? Due. Yeah, they're due. Da, you so do. Uh, yeah. So uh, do. I, 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 don't, I don't the Afro can only save them for so long. Her power <laughs> Afro. I mean, unless next week is like best hair or something. Or yeah, who they, can tease it the best? I don't, I yeah. don't know what they get. So Houston street fight. Yeah, yeah. street fight. Well, yeah. who's from Houston? You guys win. Uh, so around the table, Jasmine gone, and Janae. baby. I would agree with that. Gone. Let's hope we get a lot of good drama beforehand. Now, before well, so my roll. question is, for some odd reason, Cara Maria, I feel like something could happen there in which she's leaving. She might get if if all does not go well, Cara Cara Maria might get herself kicked off the show. You never, never know because Jen does mean business sometimes. What were you gonna say, Steve? They show uh they show Laurel like yelling at uh, Ugly Paula like in a future episode. So Did I you think Laurel kicked around. Ugly Paula, great name. Great name. All right. Well, I can't wait till next week. We're gonna head out of here. Well, Thank you guys out, for listening. Well, Thank- hey, hey, oh, hey. Whoa. We got to give our quick plugs. Yes. Oh, okay. Now. What are we plugging? First of all, let's just look at this lovely studio. Yeah, I feel Steve, like we're at- I wish you were here. I feel like we're at the Real World Reunion right now. I know. They, the Challenge uh, Reunion. John Comerford, Tamara Berg, and, uh, and, chair, and, and, chair to and of course, you too, Jesse, with your design and construction by Phil and, and Costas. Uh, it's amazing. It's really great teamwork. Yeah, it's really come together. Very like an asylum with the pillows. Beautiful, on the wall. beautiful. Like yeah, studio looks beautiful. Maria's got a great book, Every Girl Guide to Life. We you need can to get send on Amazon it. We need or to bookstore. bring this to the uh, yes. challenge to yeah. the <laughs> if, reunion. Yeah, I think a lot of them need to read that book. A yeah. lot of the girls could really help them get, get their business. And hey, can read? What was that? If they can read, if they can read, if they can it's read, got yeah. A lot of pictures though, yeah, it's got yeah. Lo- no, a lot of pretty pictures, <laughs> lots of pictures, yeah. And also, we need um to get you know maybe Kenny and um Evan could use it for their business. Yeah. Um, also, we're back on iTunes, guys. So make sure you check out the podcast. You can now find us on there. I know. But you lot. have been so uh so we you know we yeah this show you guys Absolutely. are in the top five right yeah. the rivals are you guys in the top well, five we, we of the network in the top ten so nice appreciate Congratulations. you guys for that. Um, so let your friends know if yeah. you're a fan. Yeah, and if tell your friends, friends or family. fans. Yeah, let them all know. Let them know. All right, afterbuzztv.com, and then ustream. Ustream.tv backslash afterbuzztv, or you can write us at info at afterbuzztv.com. And Any questions Twitter. or comments? And Twitter at afterbuzztv. Like us on Facebook also, and tell your friends to like us on Facebook, and post this video on your friends' walls and your friends of friends' walls. I'm completely lost. All right. Well, let's That's get out great. of here. Technology, right. man. <laughs> I can't wait for next week. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. August 4th, Jersey Shore. August 1st, Bad Girls Club. Hot mess week. (laughs) Oh, and by the way, this show was cut by our our intern, Ben Bottomley. Oh, Ben. (laughs) Nice job, Ben Bottomley. So if you notice a few mistakes, eh, forgive him. That's okay. for the most part, very smooth sailing. I just like how we have him watching all these shit shows. It's great. Yeah. After Buzz. Corrupting the youth. (laughs) Dropping IQ points one student at a time. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.